Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 
We will read portions of Psalm 18, 118, responsibly by the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord who is good, whose mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, the mercy of the Lord endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but not over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Those who are righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Now today we read the earliest written account of the resurrection and the appearances of Jesus. And it wasn't the gospel. It was a letter of Paul to the church at Corinth. The letters that Paul wrote were all written earlier than the Gospels were written down. So this letter from 1 Corinthians is actually the earliest written account of the resurrection. Paul talks about how what he had received, he passed on to them. And Paul talks about how Jesus had appeared to so many people and then last of all to him. And so if the Gospel of Mark is written down after this, why in the world would this author end the Gospel in such a way? Because what we read today is the end of the Gospel of Mark, what's considered the original Gospel of Mark, and it stops so suddenly. There is no risen Christ appearance. They flee from the tomb for terror and amazement have grabbed them, hold of them, and they say nothing to anyone. Period. Now we know they actually said something because Paul's got something passed on to him that he can write down. But this gospel is an odd one for Easter. Actually, yes, we have the three-year lectionary cycle. Year A is... We read mostly from the Gospel of Matthew, and year B is Mark, and year C is Luke. And then we go back to year A with Matthew, and we never never in the cycle have John as the main reading for a whole year. We get John all around the places. And I think in my priesthood, I've always chosen John as the reading for year B instead of this Mark Gospel. We love the Gospel of John's resurrection story with Mary Magdalene coming to the tomb and weeping and seeing who she thinks is the gardener. And I mean, that's that's the one I, and in fact, I had somebody else um, comment to me to go, well, why aren't we doing that one? (laughs) Why in the world are we doing Mark? And I really wasn't sure of my answer when I made that decision to stick with Mark today until I had sat with this. And it's odd that this has become, this week, my favorite Easter reading.
Part of it, I'm going, maybe it's the Episcopal Easter reading. They said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. <laughs> Except we know they did say something. As I sat with this oddest ending of a story written down by somebody who knows there's more, who knows that there is more to this story, it hit me, I remembered that I always thought that the Gospel of Mark starts in a very odd way. The very first verse in the Gospel of Mark, you remember Matthew and Luke gives us Christmas stories and John gives us um, the, the word becoming flesh, the, the cosmic story. Mark begins the story this way. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Period. Period. Except that's not a sentence. It's not even a sentence. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I want to propose to you that that just isn't the first sentence in a story. That's the title of the entire thing. The whole thing is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. It's a choose your own adventure ending. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ is the story of Jesus' life here on earth, but that story is gonna continue. Now, I don't know if the person writing this down, if the author of the Gospel of Mark thought maybe he would end up writing a second chapter, or possibly it was because at that time in the early church, they thought that second chapter was going to happen any moment, the second coming, that Jesus was coming back any moment. And so this was the beginning of that story, and he was writing it possibly for people who he thought were going to see. But what a gift. What a gift this has ended up being. We are called to continue this story. The beginning of the good news doesn't end with resurrection appearances. That's the beginning of more good news. And we know that the women did end up going out and figuring out how to talk about it, but it takes some time. It takes some time to figure out what this resurrection means. What does it mean when we, when, we, when we run into the risen Christ in our world? Will we recognize? Will our hearts be open to hear and see and know that God's love is living among us? Will we find the continuation of this story? The continuation of the good news of Jesus. The women are told to go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of them to Galilee. And isn't that what God always does? Goes ahead of us. The story of the good news of Christ is that God has gone ahead of us into all of life, into death and beyond. That God has gone ahead of us. He's going ahead of you. And this starts in Galilee, where the story began for them. So I think for us, oftentimes, we need to touch back into where we first met. The love of God. The reality of risen life. And then figure out how the story continues to unfold within us individually, within us as a community. For the good news of Jesus Christ continues to be written, continues to be our story as well. He's going before you. 
Go and tell. Even in your terror and your amazement, go and tell. Alleluia. Christ is risen. And now let us stand and confess our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. The Easter responses for the prayers of the people are printed in your bulletin on page 6. Let us pray. Let the whole church rejoice in the city and in open country, in this land and throughout the world, for Christ is risen. Let each congregation and fellowship rejoice. Let each heart and mind rejoice for Christ is risen. O Lord, may we and the whole church rejoice in your victory. Let us proclaim the good news that death is defeated, that we are set free and Christ has won for us the victory. May we reflect your glory and the power of your resurrection. Lord, may we know you and the power of your resurrection. We pray for all who are struggling for peace all who are longing for new hope and new life. We remember war-torn cities and places that have suffered from disasters. We pray for all who are seeking to rebuild communities and lives, all who are bringing new life and courage to oppressed peoples. Lord, may we know you. We would We rejoice with all who celebrate birthdays this week, especially Michelle Willis, T.G. West, B.J. Lawranger, and Jason Rohr. Are there other thanksgivings? Let the power of the resurrection be known in our homes. In you, risen Lord, May relationships be strengthened and restored. In you, risen Lord, may hurts be healed and well-being restored. We pray for homes where there is violence or neglect. Lord, may we know you and the power of your resurrection. We pray for all struggling peoples that they may find hope in you. We pray for all who are in pain and all who have lost hope for all distressed or disturbed peoples, for the chronically ill, for all who walk in darkness. 
We remember those who have asked for our prayers. Dorcas, Paul, Ellen, Mark, Kevin, Linda, Lisa, and Linda. Are there others? May they know the joy of your risen life. Lord, may we know you. And the power of your resurrection. We remember all who have lost loved ones, who are deeply bereaved and in great sorrow. We pray for loved ones departed. We remember especially Lisa Murphy, Elizabeth Crotz, Kayla, and Jerry Bear. Are there others? May we be comforted in the knowledge that they rejoice where sorrow and pain are no more. Lord, may we know you. Hallelujah to our God. Praise and thanksgiving for life and for life eternal. Hallelujah to our Lord Jesus Christ, conqueror of death and hell. Hallelujah to Christ, the gateway to life everlasting. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you for your life-giving and life-renewing powers this glorious day and evermore. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Peace and health. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Welcome to all, and a happy Easter. Um, thank you to our fill-in choir members. It's so wonderful having Libby's mom and sister join the choir um, for today um, as they are with her for this Easter holiday. Uh, our, as many of you know, we have been, this parish has been, actually the whole community, I've been hearing stories from other places as well. Um, there's really high COVID transmission right now. Um, we have a, within the last like 10 days, we have almost 20 people in this parish alone. Um, so if I greet you at the back door wearing my mask, um, don't worry, I'm fine. I test every Sunday. I've been testing every Sunday for several years now. Um, but I want to make sure that I remain fine and I encourage you also to do whatever precautions you are comfortable with um, in your own life as we continue in this time and at this time of allergies and pollen, as everybody's going, oh, my allergies are so bad this year, um, don't assume they are your allergies this year. <laughs> Pay attention to what's happening with you um, and on behalf of each other. So while we have so many people out in the choir right now, it's wonderful to have the, the pews filled. Um, anyway, thank you. The office will be closed tomorrow <laughs> as, as I take a day off. Um, this week, I, I want to encourage you to go back to the last e-news and read once again about the landscaping plan with the native um, plants that we're going to be putting in. That work begins this week as we do the ground preparation, and then the first of the plants will be going in in time for us to march out there on the Sunday of closest to Earth Day um, and bless that plantings there. So I'm thrilled about this step forward in our care of creation um, and our care specifically of North Carolina creation as we match the native plants with the native birds and insects and things that depend on them. So I'm really excited about this. After this service, for the little ones, there is an egg hunt outside. There are some baskets on the back chair and you can go out the door and turn left. All the eggs are sort of on this side of the church, along the walkway, in the memorial garden, um, out to the 
uh, labyrinth and playground area, um, but not out closer to the street and not out there and not out past the short wall in the memorial garden. So um, trying to keep um, their, their, their area contained, but um, uh, welcome to that. Um, eggs being, for many, many millennia, that sign of new life, um, of nourishment, um, and I understand um, that they possibly started getting decorated during Holy Week when the church had real restrictions on meat and eggs, anything from animals during Holy Week, so they'd mark all the eggs that were hatched, were laid during Holy Week, so they wouldn't eat those, and then they were decorated for Easter. But whether that's legend or real, I don't know, but I thought that was fascinating. And now we come to this table, this table of God's love, this table of new life, of nourishment. And God's love is poured out for the whole world, so no one is barred from that table, from that love. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere 
to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim, therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
post-communion prayer is found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. rejoicing in the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.